who, in your opinion, stands to gain the most from the debt ceiling agreement. When the issues at hand are actually serious, our American political system excels at finding common ground and reaching agreements. The recently reached agreement between Congress and the White House to postpone the nation's debt ceiling for two years drastically reaffirms this strength. This enables the fulfillment of prior obligations. The agreement reached by President Joe Biden, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, and their staffs was approved by the House of Representatives on May 31 and June 1 and subsequently by the Senate. Staffs should be given priority because they are responsible for carrying out the intricate, minute give and take necessary for a practical and workable agreement. The accord postpones the $31.4 trillion debt ceiling until January 1, 2025. This delays any significant future crises until after the 2024 elections, which is crucial for Biden in particular since he is up for re-election next year and is currently constantly rated very unpopular in surveys. Both parties agreed to recover the roughly $27 billion that has been appropriated but has not yet been used to address the COVID-19 public health crisis, or claw back in the slang of the day. Republicans have been irritated by this for a while. Another Republican win was to include work requirements for people receiving food stamps and other federal economic assistance. Such requirements for able-bodied recipients of aid was part of a similar comprehensive budget and debt deal negotiated during the Clinton administration in the 1990s. Progressive lawmakers avoid supporting the debt ceiling deal, centrist Democrats unite. How Republicans are responding to the debt ceiling bill. Enormous sums spent for Medicare, Medicaid and Social Security are sealed in law and therefore non-discretionary. However, a true cash flow crisis, meaning the government literally could not pay bills, would theoretically put these extremely popular, and therefore politically very powerful, programs at risk, at least over the short term. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen's most recent statement on government funds indicated June 5 as the failsafe date, after which the federal government would have difficulty in paying bills. The agreement was in these terms reached just in time. As indicated above, Staff members deserve credit for the long hours and disciplined discussion that resulted in this successful agreement. However, especially in politics, the boss gets the credit. We should keep both groups in mind. The biggest winner here is McCarthy. The Republicans recaptured the House of Representatives in 2022, but by the barest of majorities. An anticipated Republican red wave in the congressional elections failed to materialize. A nearly equal balance of representation between the two parties in the House almost guarantees that partisanship will be intense, and makes bipartisanship more difficult. Additionally, McCarthy had to suffer through numerous votes, and make many concessions to the right wing, over a grueling four days before House Republicans finally elected him their speaker in January of this year. Unavoidably therefore, while victorious eventually, he assumed the gavel of the speakership appearing to be beleaguered and perhaps compromised. In the intense rough world of Washington politics, cynics sneered his tenure might be weak and brief. Given this background, McCarthy gains considerable standing, and no doubt influence, that should be of great help in coming political and policy conflicts within Congress. By inference, he clearly has picked effective staff members. He has also managed to overcome the rigid and radical far right of his party. Biden also benefits politically, at least over the short term. However, he faces multiple electoral difficulties, including the disastrous mishandling of Afghanistan withdrawal, 